everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris Yeah, definitely. Talking of hating to lose, I'll briefly touch on this uh, period of time. We'll come back to it in your time at Birmingham Panthers because that wasn't really that was a bad season. Because I remember you played with Lake in that season as well, and I think Williams is there as well. Talking of that losing, how was that? How, how did you just deal with that season on the mental side? Because you know it's not the same as what you're used to. Yeah, those rah rah speeches weren't working that year. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Uh, it was a tough situation for us there, right? So when we first got there, I think we yeah. were three and one to start the season, maybe two and one. And then yeah. we lost three players, three of our imports for whatever reason. Um, and all of a sudden it was a whole different team. And yeah, it was tough because the losing was uh, brutal. But I do think that um, when you do lose, uh, and I have been on a couple losing teams in my career, you, you learn what not to do, which is uh, a lot of times – almost as powerful as learning what to do. So um, there was plenty of times where I would be, and that season was tough. I played for Nigel that year, as a matter of fact, Nigel Lloyd. And yeah, he was yeah. great. He was great to play for. Just the talent, you know, it was just young players in a, in a, in a league like that. It was just almost impossible to compete. Uh, but you just learn, you know, how you want to build the organization if you had one. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, the losing can losing can uh, be powerful as well and really uh, affect uh, affect your career in the future. It can, yeah, it can be one of those make or break situations. Really, if if you lose, it can give you that motivation to do better. So yeah, it was Lakin's fault. Tell him it was uh, <laughs> it was his fault. <laughs> I love Lakin. Lakin's yeah, the best. No, I love no, that guy. I'll let him know, man. All right. <laughs> So talking of that, so we'll go back now. Um, so talk to us about your journey from college and, you know, your journey coming in to the UK just before you got to the UK. What was that journey like just before you got to the UK? Fault. I don't know if you, you lost me. Yeah. Um, uh, journey coming out of college, you mean? I played in the USBL when I finished. I think that was my first experience, which was cool. It was a league that was in the summer uh, in the 90s and in the 80s. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, I believe, um, before they had those NBA summer leagues so much. So it was a lot of different players playing in it. I thought that was a rewarding experience. And then I bounced around for a while. I played in like six or seven different countries, um, yeah. you know, moved around quite a bit, uh, had good life experiences. I tell people all the time, like when I left in 95, 96, around that time, you know, it wasn't so much the internet wasn't really there yet. You didn't really have a phone. So yeah, you really yeah. arrived right. in these lands that didn't, you didn't speak the language. And it was just like, here you go, you know, like good <laughs> luck. Just, you're, you're, um, on your own. It was tough. It was tough. It was uh, a real eye opener um, for you. And you had to really learn a lot about yourself, you know, like you just say on your own with your own thoughts. And so being an overseas player back then was a lot of, a lot different than it is now. Now you can stay connected yeah. with anyone, um, you know, watch anything you want. Uh, I, back then, I can remember being on teams where we would wait for the VHS tapes to come so we could watch uh, the NBA game that was three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, as a group, you'd get together and you'd watch them. And, um, yeah, it was, it was totally different. So, you know, I moved around a lot. And then I, I stopped playing basketball in 1998. It was the last season, actually, sorry, 99, and I went to work for ESPN. So I went to work at ESPN yeah. for a year. I worked at ESPN for a year in between my time coming back to basketball, which eventually would be England. So in that time period, I was in television working on the NBA Tonight, which was also a, a phenomenal experience for my future. And oh. um, yeah, it was I'm pretty good. Touch it was pretty that. I was going to touch on that. Talk us through that whole experience of ESPN and, you know, working with NBA some of the NBA broadcasters and all that. How was that um, whole experience? Intense. Uh, working at ESPN was intense. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, it started out with the with the interview. I remember in the interview, you know, it was like an interview like no other. It was uh, who was the best pitcher in the American League West this year, and why do you think so? Who's oh, really? got the best? Yeah, who's got the best uh, special teams in the NFL, and why do you think so? Uh, all that kind of Genius. stuff. There was, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
they were throw they throw it at you and you know you have to have that knowledge of sport and then you get in there and it's television so you have to really learn a lot about television but for me fortunately uh, they recognized, you know, my basketball background and gave me an opportunity to work on the NBA tonight that year. And uh, it was six of us. And we watched, we worked on the NBA tent. We watched NBA games and we cut the highlights. We do features. Uh, a lot of times they would sit me with either the pro player that was on the show that night or the, the coach. And they would sit me with him and we'd watch a game and we'd break it down and we'd go, okay, this is what we want to show. So I'd go back to the editing room bring it back in. And it was really my first opportunity to break down video uh, yeah. with, with <laughs> legendary coaches and, and player, you know, so it was an incredible experience. Um, but uh, as my time grew to a close there, you know, I was thinking more about coming back for basketball. I was still only 28, 29. I felt like I had a lot left in the tank. And, okay. um, and I, I, I made a phone, somebody called me and said, would you be interested in Birmingham bullets? And I didn't know much about them. And um, I called a friend of mine who had played in the league, Terrell Myers, great player, played for Sheffield, yeah. one of the better players from near where I, I'm from. And he told me, he said, I think you'll love it, Rob. I think you, you, you get, the league will suit you. And, and that was it. I, uh, I told ESPN I'm going back to play basketball. And uh, the rest is history. I've been in England now uh, ever since the year 2000. So that's so good, yeah, to 10 years or so. To, no, 20 years or so, yeah. yeah. 20 years, yeah, yeah 20 yeah. years. So what kind, of, what kind of people did you work with at the Tonight Show? Say again? What, what, what people did you work with at the Tonight Show? What players? Yeah, yeah, I worked with, well, I was working with Fred Carter at the time, and he was okay. an NBA coach for a long time, and he was an NBA player for a long time, and he was pretty much there most of the time. But I worked with a lot of different guys. Jim O'Brien, who was the coach of the Celtics at the time. Um, I remember Ed Pickney, who used to play I'm in the NBA man. for a lost time. He yeah, came yeah. in. Um, I worked with um, I worked with David Aldridge a lot, who, 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 who's an oh, insider. Man. Yeah, he was on our show as well. So, um, yeah, and some of the guys that were on that show have gone on to do some, some really big things, um, you know, behind the scenes, you know. Uh, so – yeah, I learned so much about basketball with those guys, but also television. Also television, which is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy job. It's uh, live television. You know, you have, to, you have to be able to perform under pressure in those situations uh, because you have about 15 minutes to cut the video, to write what they have to say. So, yeah, pressure pack. Wow. But, uh, you got to know your exciting. stuff as well, isn't it? Sure, that's know why your they stuff give you that, as well and all that. That's why they give you that interview early. They, they, they weed yeah. out the people who don't, who don't know in sports. So when you came back to the UK, I see you made a little impact coming back to the UK, led the BBO in assist in 2002 and 2004, twice. And how was those, how was the first, say, first six years of the UK? How did you find adapting to the UK and the whole UK culture on and off the court? Yeah, I didn't know too much about UK culture, to be honest with you. I mean, what you saw on TV in the U.S. when I was growing up was the royal family. Um, and, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the punk punk style haircuts. And that's all I really knew. I didn't really know much about it, seriously. And so that's when good. I arrived in Birmingham, it was a real eye-opener. Um, it was, uh, you know, different than, than what I could, I could imagine. I loved it right from the start. I mean, the first night, the first night that we arrived, there was three of yeah. us that got off the plane, Americans, and actually I think four of us, and our houses weren't ready yet. So for the weekend, we were going to stay in a hotel. And the hotel was yeah. on Broad Street. And Broad Street in 2000 on a weekend, I <laughs> on a weekend was fairly Man. lively. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the UK, right? So we're, we're, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we looked at each other and we were like, this, this has a chance to be pretty, pretty good time here. Uh, and <laughs> and then um, you know I fell in love with it right away. I really enjoyed playing in the league. I think when you look back at the league at that time, you know it was a game every Saturday night live on Sky Sports. Um, there were so many great coaches, personalities in the league. Uh, so many great, so much great talent in the league. And um, yeah, it was fun. It was you could speak English to everybody. And uh, yeah, you know, yeah. for me, for for me, that was that was wonderful. And I really enjoyed my time at Birmingham. I made lifelong friends there, uh, and I enjoyed playing it for those fans. Those fans were, were great fans, which is disappointing now that they don't have a team. Yeah, because, um, yeah, it was it was a fun place to play. 
What were the fans like, though, at that, that, that time? Birmingham Bullet fans. What were they like compared to the Leicester fans now? Well, I mean, it was similar, I would say. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of, lot of diehard fans, a lot of fans that would really help the club in any way possible. But, you know, we used to play in the old Aston Villa event center, which four sides, wow. and it, it held about 2,500, 3,000. And we'd get, we'd get some good crowds in there. And, um, you know, it was, it was exciting playing there and playing all the great players in the league and the great coach. When you look back at the coaches in the league at that time, you look at Nick Nurse, Chris Finch, um, Kevin Bob. Bob Donwell. Kevin had retired at that point. Okay. Um, yeah, he had retired at that point, but he was doing the TV. Um, but, you know, you're looking at a lot of personalities in the league, and and then the players were super talented. It was, uh, it was, it was a fun league to play in. And we, we had the opportunity with Birmingham to end up going into Europe the, my second season. So we played in a yes. European competition, uh, which also is something that was uh, phenomenal. Enjoyed that. I was as good. How was that? How was that competing in Europe, man? Uh, awesome. At the time. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we we did very well. We we qualified for the second round out of the group stages. Um, you know, we 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 played uh, some good teams. We beat some teams from you know Belgium and, and Sweden and, and Poland, the Lithuania, Latvia. We traveled so much. But the one thing about that season for us was. I think we played close to 65 games that season, 65, 70 games, wow, because that's, it was crazy. Because in October, during the BBL season, we went to America for 15 days and played nine games in 15 days in America against universities, the pro Birmingham team. They paid us to do it. Yeah, it yeah. was something that we worked at. So we played at University of Florida, Mississippi State. We traveled all around the country on a bus and played. It was great, but by the end of the season, we felt it because um, all those games and playing throughout Europe and everything uh, added up. But uh, it was an experience of a lifetime, no doubt. That's good, man. That's, that's good. We hopefully we could get back to that. You know what I mean, competing in Europe again, definitely. We get yeah, back to that. yeah. Well, I mean, we tried with the riders, and you know, for us as a, as a team, it was awesome too. I mean, we didn't we came up short, and you know, we know what we need budget wise, and that's yeah. what the league needs, and possibly London soon with what they're what they're talking about having yeah, down yeah. there. Definitely. So far, everything, 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 Chris, everything, Chris, everything, Chris. Everything, everything, Chris. Uh.